our nation today at a crossroads facing a moral dilemma. Less than 48 hours after the attempted assassination of former President Donald Trump. It's a story, if we're honest, that we feared we would have to report on one day, and not just us. A lot of you wrote in to us about it. Some of our friends in more right-leaning and honest media talked about it and then got ridiculed and ripped. What happened in tiny Butler, Pennsylvania on Saturday evening threatens to undermine everything we hold dear. There are serious questions about this tragedy that killed one, injured others, including the former president and presumptive nominee of the Republican Party in this presidential race, Donald Trump. An investigation into the security failures is already underway on multiple levels, both internally at the Secret Service and now several House and Senate committees are doing a deep dive in which there will be hearings and testimony that is compelled of those involved. But we cannot ignore the unhinged rhetoric from politicians and, yes, some in the media around this event. We're going to look into all of that. But first, I want to walk you through what we've learned about the attack. And thank you for joining us on our Saturday evening live stream as things were unfolding. For those of you who missed it and would like to watch it, it's posted on YouTube still under uh, live. Here's what we know so far for sure. As Mr. Trump delivered remarks, a would-be assassin managed to climb onto a rooftop that was about a football field and a half away from him. Anywhere between 130 and 150 yards are the estimates. Separated a killer from the former president of the United States. Mr. Trump almost died on Saturday. Almost died, very clearly. He almost got his head shot off on national television. That's what happened. Keep that in mind as you read the media and their write-ups of this event. Eagle-eyed spectators actually noticed the man. They noticed the civilian. He was not in any sort of black outfit, bulletproof vest. He wasn't trying to impersonate Secret Service. And they called out to law enforcement for help. You can hear the alarm in their voices. As they're like, he's right there. He's right there looking for any law enforcement on scene, which, yes, was outside the Secret Service security perimeter, but within eyesight of where the president was then speaking and couldn't find anybody. However, eventually someone got the word because based on the video we're about to show you, law enforcement did get involved moments hereafter, but dragged its feet. Watch this. Look, they're all pointing. Yeah. yeah, someone's on top of the roof. Look. There he is right there. Multiple people. Yeah. Right there. Looking See him? The shooter. He's laying down. Yeah, he's laying down. And so I'm here with you fighting my tail to get a sentence. What's happening? And the next year we'll take back. Uh, yeah, look, there he is. Because we have millions and millions of people in our Shooter's readjusting his body position. Getting comfortable. We have in position. We have people that should be here. Right here, right on the roof. It's much tougher than it happened. Again, adjusting. That video is horrifying. There's no other word for it. A killer lying in wait. The people down below, these are middle-aged women, men. They all see it. If you watch the video, you'll see, I don't know, maybe 10 who are looking at him, pointing, saying, there he is, there he is. And if you look behind them, they are 20, 15, 20 feet away from the back of the Trump crowd. How is that outside the security perimeter, by the way? There appears to be little to no urgency from the people tasked with protecting the former and possibly future president. How is it that for that amount of time that we just saw on video, we don't know how long it went on prior to that, no one from law enforcement swarmed the area, never mind the rooftop. What's more, we've learned that one officer, local cop, actually did confront the shooter. We believe it was in response to these civilians. Went up on the roof, we're told, but retreated when the gunman pointed a rifle at him which allowed the gunman to then open fire reportedly immediately thereafter on Mr. Trump and the crowd. It's truly unbelievable. And yet the former president survived, perhaps only thanks to God, who I believe must have been protecting him that day. I just, it's just, there's no other logical explanation. A man was killed trying to save his wife and his daughter, and it's horrific what happened to him. The leader of our country, former and possibly next, was spared. We're gonna show you a clip now. You will hear Mr. Trump speaking, and then he slightly tilts his head to the side. And I do mean slightly. He was gesturing, 
gesturing toward the slides he had brought to show the illegal immigration problem off to his right. And that is why he tilted his head ever so slightly. Shots ring out. He grabs at his right ear. The time is 6.11 p.m., roughly six minutes into his speech. Watch. Take a look at what happened. Look at this, an inch or two in the other direction, and we could be talking about the unimaginable. Within seconds, his Secret Service detail would surround him. An image from the scene, widely circulated over the weekend, shows a female agent here on screen left, crouching down behind all the other agents who are protecting Trump, and it does appear that she is frozen in fear. That's an assumption. We'll wait to hear her explanation about why she's there. Were there concentric circles? that you're supposed to form around the president? I don't know. Doesn't look good. This is a woman who is trained to take a bullet for her protectee. She appears to be the one later who was unable to holster her weapon in separate video. According to a published transcript from CNN, a female agent is also heard asking, what are we doing? What are we doing? Where are we going? It is unclear whether that's the same agent as well. Listen here. A male urgent agent is then heard instructing people to take the former president to a spare limousine. Less than a minute after the first shots ring out, law enforcement confirms the shooter's down, taken out by a sniper. And that brings us to the moment that will go down in history. As the agents attempt to move him, Mr. Trump tells them to wait, wait. He doesn't know whether there's a second shooter. By the way, neither do the Secret Service. And with blood dripping down his face, he lifts his fist into his, the air, the same fist that just touched his bloody head where he took a bullet that grazed his upper right outer ear and mouths the words fight over and over. Watch. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Trying to tell the crowd he was okay. They would be okay. We would be okay. He understood on some internal level what they needed and what the rest of us needed. Who would have the presence of mind and the courage to do that? I heard someone online, I can't forgive me, I can't remember where I heard it. It was a podcast saying he reacted the way every man alive, alive wishes and hopes and prays he would react. God forbid they found themselves in that situation. I think that's right. Our country still does value courage, bravery, resilience, temerity, strength. And it's one of the reasons people love Trump. He's the embodiment of it. For our YouTube audience, if you haven't seen this, please go look at this moment as Mr. Trump lifts his fist in the air with the American flag waving behind him. Not for nothing, but he was shot at 6.11 p.m. A couple people have sent this to me. 6.11 p.m. If you read Apesians 611 in the Bible, it reads as follows in part, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. 611, he was shot, and that's 611. Listen to that. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. I'm almost emotional reading it. It's just what happened to him and our country this weekend is extremely grave and extremely important. And we are all so lucky it wasn't worse than it, than it was. Um, we'll get into the victim of this attack and the disgusting attacks on him still. His memory, 50-year-old firefighter, father of two young girls who are grieving today along with his widow, and they attack him for his politics, for a uh, Silly political joke he made online one time. Where, are, where is their soul? Where are their hearts? Today, Mr. Trump is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, for the opening of the Republican National Convention. He says he's tossed out his original speech and will call for a new effort at national unity. Tucker Carlson has apparently spoken to the president and said he's changed. 
he, he thinks he's changed, that taking a bullet to, in the face will do that to you. In a statement released on Sunday, the former president also acknowledged it was God alone who prevented the unthinkable from happening to him. He paid tribute to the other victims and said in this moment, it is more important than ever that we stand united. And he went on to say, I truly love our country. He told the New York Post he is supposed to be dead today. As for the man who tried to kill him, here's what we've learned. 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks was identified by the FBI on Sunday. The feds say he was not known to the agency prior to the attempted assassination. As you know, we normally do not name mass shooters on this program because they desire infamy and we decline to help. We've made an exception given that this is a presidential assassination. The name is already ubiquitous. The feds say there was no indication of mental health issues, though I've got to be honest, tough to believe. Let's wait. He had a limited social media presence. Also interesting. His politics are unclear, but we're going to learn more about all of that. State voting records show he was a registered Republican, but Federal Election Commission documents show a donor with the same name, age and address gave money to a Democratic fundraising group on January 20th, 2021, the day of President Biden's inauguration. All right. I am I am telling you this because the moronic left wing press has spent the past two days, two days saying he's a registered Republican. He's a he's a Republican. You absolute inane idiots. Yeah, he seemed like a big Donald Trump fan, didn't he? What are you saying? Like he he secretly was a Republican, so we can't blame this on Democratic ref, uh, rhetoric. What is your point? He loved Trump. Is that what you're he killed him out of love? Is that where we're going to go? I mean, like, just stop. Just stop that. I, I don't understand the insanely stupid argument that is being made over that. And the same outlets that are reporting he was a registered Republican are nine times out of 10 ignoring the fact that he was making donations to the Democrats, at least this one. All right. So I don't know why he registered Republican. I don't know why he donated to a Democrat group. I do know he shot Donald Trump. So just stop. Stop. CNN and The New York Times reporting that the man's father is a registered libertarian. His mother's a registered Democrat. My mom's a registered Democrat, too. You know, that doesn't tell us what his politics are. Both parents are licensed professional counselors, which is sort of interesting, according to state records. The shooter was from an affluent area. He used a gun that had been legally purchased by his father. Uh, his father told the local press, I, I, I don't want to talk until I know what the hell is going on. And I've spoken to law enforcement. Uh, the shooter has been described as a loner was apparently rejected by his high school's rifle team. Here's a former classmate. I didn't have any interaction with him, but he was a, like a kid that was always alone. He was always bullied uh, every day. He was just an outcast. Uh, yeah. I mean, he would sit alone at lunch. I mean, he was just an outcast, and you know how kids are nowadays, so they're going to see someone like that and they're going to target him because they think it's funny or whatever. So it's the best way I can describe it. And it's honestly kind of sad. Like, I don't want to say this is what provoked it, but you never know. And you said he was a loner? Yeah. Um, I want to say he was a loner more because he was just, he was quiet, but like he was just bullied. Like he was bullied so much, so much. He was just made fun of, I guess, for the way he dressed or his appearance. How did he dress? Uh, like they were just saying jeans. He'd wear hunting outfits sometimes. Uh, I He would always wear a mask, even after COVID. He, he wore a mask. The shooter did belong to a local gun club, which has a 200-yard rifle range. Remember, he fired at former President Trump from less than that. Various news outlets have reported that he had explosive material found both in his car and at his home. And there are some reports that law enforcement believes he may have expected to survive the shooting and unleash further carnage. Now, as we continue to piece together what went wrong, we are faced with a choice. Who do we want to be as a nation? Perhaps we can glean the answer from another tragic event at another time when our nation seemed irretrievably broken. On the night Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, he wore a wool and silk lined coat. It was the same coat he had worn just a month prior to deliver his second inaugural address. Inside are stitched the words, one country, one destiny. Are we one or are we not? Are we worth saving? 
or aren't we? Do we want what's best for our nation, for our children, or don't we? Is this the country we want them to grow up in? Let's hope for all of our sakes we can find our way back to one country, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can't help feeling that bit by bit, these horrific events, as awful as they are, may eventually, not immediately, push us closer to that. I just don't think that the reasonable, normal American citizen wants to live like this. Do you ever think, how can I work this hard and still be in debt? The piles of overdue bills, the threatening phone calls, never having money to do anything. If you are trapped in debt, done with debt can be a way out. They have developed aggressive new strategies to end your debt permanently. Done with debt stands between you and the harassing, annoying bill collectors. Who wants to deal with them? They tirelessly negotiate with your creditors to lower or even forgive what you may owe. And they do it all without bankruptcy or new loans. One client said, one phone call saved us a fortune. I only wish we'd done this long ago. Done with debt has unique strategies to get you out of debt faster and put more money in your pocket every month. But you need to hurry because some debt solutions are time sensitive and you don't want to miss out. Visit donewithdebt.com. Talk with one of their debt relief strategists for free. What do you have to lose except your debt? Go to donewithdebt.com. That's donewithdebt.com. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.